Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hello, my name is Adam McIntyre, and I am sitting here with Pastor Ken, who just finished part four of the Unshakable series. Thanks so much for being here with us, Pastor Ken. Uh, we actually have uh, quite a handful of questions. People were, were very uh, interested in this series, and so I'm just going to launch into question number one. Uh, so the first question that came in was, how should Christians practice humility in front of others who maybe are not Christians or who maybe uh, carry with them a lot of pride? How do we practice those things in front of others who have a lot of pride? Yeah. Well, of course, I don't know the context of the questioner, um, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, is it is it that person's spouse? Is it that person's boss? Is it that person's uh, child's teacher that they're alluding to that's this proud person? But I don't suppose it really matters. Um, I think probably when there's a proud person in our life, the temptation or the desire is we want to will humility onto them, which is probably what underlies that. But we can't will them into humility. So what do we do? Well, we can t we we don't change. Right. We certainly don't try to become more like them. But we take the humble path and uh, trust that verse in James that we looked at that he will lift us up if we'll humble ourselves. And so. Uh, it seems rather simplistic. Uh, so how do we act humble when that person's acting proud? Well, you just keep doing it. Right. And trust that over time, maybe the, the steady drip on the rock will erode uh, and something in that person's heart will soften and there'll be a transformation. Absolutely. Ultimately, it's not really up to us. It's up to the Holy Spirit to kind of yeah. come in and make that change in that person's heart. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so the next question uh, is actually a really, really good one. As far as um, they want to know, what is the difference between being prideful and then being proud of someone? So for instance, like a, if a mom is proud of her son for doing well in baseball, or like when Paul writes to the church and says, I am proud uh, yeah, of what you are right. doing here, what is the difference between being prideful and then being proud? Sure. Yeah, because that's, that can be a fine line, can't it? So let's just d drill into that a little bit. Suppose, um, well, first of all, even as the Apostle Paul illustrated, there must be some sort of healthy pride that we can take in celebrating another person's uh, victory, accomplishments. We see our son or daughter, you know, d d hit the home run or d d do the dance or, you know, whatever it is, or, um, or even the person that we're trying to disciple and bringing along in their faith and we see them get some traction or they prayed out loud in their small group and, and we feel a sense of pride right. about that. Well, clearly that is a good thing. I think where the line must be is but, but the, that we're crossing potentially is when now we're getting puffed up and drawing our energy from that person and from that person's accomplishment or we go into a funk for the rest of the day if they strike out. Right. Okay, something's gone awry here. You were f f feeling good feelings for their sake, but now it's all about you. Right. Clearly, uh, the, the, the emphasis has changed, the focus has changed, and now what that person's doing is all about you. Somewhere in there, you cross that line and, and you're getting puffed up right. um, or deflated on the flip side of the coin, d depending on that person. Right. And so I think that must be uh, the challenge mm -hmm. for us to make sure that when we're talking about, I'm so proud of you, uh, or I'm proud to be your dad, or I'm proud to be, you know, that w w the focus that we're putting on is, is really on them. Right. It's not on me. And boy, pity the person who doesn't get to be with me because, <laughs> you know, they'd really have a good dad then, or they'd really have a good uh, teacher or, or something. Well, obviously, we just swung across that line. Right. And it's so easy to find our self-esteem or our worth in other things, whether it's, you know, job or... Sure. Uh, social groups or even your own children, which kind of brings up, uh, brings us to the last question of 
um, it's so easy to create all these other idols in our lives mm -hmm. where we really just derive our self-worth out of just things um, yes. and instead of the one true God. And so how is it that we are able to identify the idols that are in our lives, especially if we're blind to them? Sure. Well, I think this is where community mm. comes in very importantly. Uh, you know, we don't take this journey with Christ by ourselves. Right. We have the indwelling of his Holy Spirit and we have the community of brothers and sisters who also are taking this journey mm -hmm. in Christ. And this is a place where community is very valuable. When particularly, I'm not even thinking now about a grow group that has 10 or 12 or 15 people co-ed, mm -hmm. uh, but a subset of that. Maybe you have one person in particular, uh, same gender that you, have a lunch with periodically or, or even weekly and in more of a very transparent, um, you know, forthright conversation where you can say, hey, you help me, you, like God, you search my heart and help me know, is there any wickedness inside of me that you see? Is there anything I'm putting ahead of the one true God uh, that I might be blind to? Right. And a good loving brother or sister in the Lord will say, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I have been noticing, you know, you seem to be spending so much time or so much energy and so much of your self-worth and everything is tied up in this. And a spouse can do this too, right? Um, sometimes even when you don't ask, a, a spouse can help us <laughs> to identify those idols. The question is then will we be humble right. to receive that word and make adjustments and corrections accordingly. Absolutely, yeah, it's vital that we have those people that we can trust completely, be vulnerable and honest with, and who we know we can trust their feedback, yeah. um, and we can apply that to our sure. lives. Yeah, I'll say one other thing, and, and, and that is the, the value of listening prayer. Mm. I think so often in many people's devotional lives, in my devotional life, it's easy to um, even be busy in our devotions. Busy, I've got to read this passage. Busy, I've got to jot down some thoughts from this passage. Busy, I need to, to pray because I need to get on. Instead of saying, you know what, I'm just going to sit before the Lord and just give him 15 minutes right. and just sit silently and just say, search my heart, O God. And because you do that and you'll be surprised at how quickly he will put something on your mind. Well, it's about this. Now that you've given me a little time to actually sit still and listen. Um, so he, he can reveal those things to us. But so it's, it's a both end, I think. Right. Sometimes we just have to block out the noise in the rest of the world. And, and that's when we can really hear God speaking to us about those things. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Ken, for being here with us today. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.